Hello, this is Father Bob Warren of the Franciscan Friars of the Atonement. Thank you for listening to this rebroadcast of the Ave Maria Hour radio show. The Friars' popular Ave Maria Hour was first brought to the radio airwaves in 1939, recorded in New York City and on the mountainside grounds at Graymoor, a home in Garrison, New York. These timeless classic stories of the Bible and the lives of the saints came to life each week through dramatic reenactment by professional actors and actresses. You know, friends, Christ once said, Do not hide your treasure under a bushel. In saying this, he meant share your gifts, share your talents. The Friars of the Atonement feel the message in these broadcasts remains as powerful and timely as when they were originally aired, and we are so happy to be able to share them with you today. To learn more about the missions and ministries of the Friars of the Atonement, I invite you to visit our website, www.atonementfriars.org. In the meantime, sit back and enjoy this rebroadcast of the Ave Maria Hour. St. Norbert. Eight hundred years ago, the White Canons, as they were called, supported at least eight abbeys in Central Europe and a few nunneries as well. The religious of this order are also called Norbertines, in recognition of the founder, St. Norbert. It was he who established the first abbey in the valley of Premontre in the year of our Lord, 1119. Can I help you? I... I hope so. I've come a long way. What can we do for you? I'm looking for a man I used to know. I didn't know him well. He's slightly older than I. But I knew him at the Imperial Court. He was armoner for the Emperor Henry V. Yes. Then he disappeared from the court. Suddenly. I thought nothing of that. We all knew he was eccentric. Everyone liked him, you understand. I liked him very much. But we all knew he was eccentric. Odd, you know. Odd in what way? Well, I told you he was attached to the imperial court. He did all the things the others did. Court functions, hunting with the royal party, vacations in the country. And uh, he found time for women. There were several he could have married. Yes. Go on, please. He was just like the rest of us, except that he had a streak of of piety. I suppose you'd call it that. At court, we never took it seriously. His piety never seemed to interfere with his pleasure. You know how some people are. They like having a reputation for being pious, but they don't mean anything by it. I know very well. Even when Norbert received minor orders and became a subdeacon, we didn't think it meant anything, not really. I mean, to prepare the bread and wine for mass, what's that after all? It was a little unusual for one of us to be doing those things, but we were all very fond of him, and someone would always end the discussion by saying, well, Norbert was... Always eccentric, you know. Nobody held it against him. This uh, Norbert is the man you are looking for? I can't forget him. He haunts me. Last year I was in Cologne and I heard rumors that there he'd become a priest. I could hardly believe it. Why? Because he wasn't that sort of man at all. Aside from assisting at the Mass, he just wasn't that sort of man. But he did become a priest. The Archbishop of Cologne ordained him ten years ago. Norbert, you know him? Very well. He's been a priest for ten years? Yes. Tell me, I heard a story in Cologne that when he appeared to have the priesthood conferred on him, he wore a single garment made of lambskin and tied with a rope. These rumors are true? They are true. You see, 
I said he was eccentric. I'd rather call it a symbol of his desire to renounce worldly things. It's difficult to think of Norbert, Norbert I knew, renouncing the pleasures of life. After he was ordained, he sold all his estates and gave all he possessed to the poor. He did that? He sold everything? Well, for himself, he kept 40 silver marks, a, a missile, a few vestments, and a chalice. That's all? And a mule. Can't believe it. You seem to know him well. I do. Then you must know where he is now. He is here. Here? In this desolate place? Oh, Premontre is not so desolate as all that. Oh, it's dismal. It's lonely. There's no sun. The forest casts a lot of shade, I must admit. But we've cleared enough to raise a few of the sturdier vegetables. Are there many of you here? Forty, now. Father Norbert started with only thirteen. I was one of the thirteen. I was a young chaplain in Cambrai, and I came with my archbishop to visit Father Norbert. We, too, had uh, heard of his eccentricities, but after an hour's talk with him, they were no longer eccentricities. They were signs of God's grace. I never went back to Cambrai. Perhaps that's why I've never been able to forget him. I think that may very well be the reason. May I introduce myself? I am Theobald, Count of Champagne. Uh, may I ask your name? I am Brother Hugh of Foss. May I see Norbert, Brother Hugh? Of course. I'll take you to him. Follow me, please. <laughs> But how did it happen? How in the world did it happen? Should I be offended, Theobald, that you were so amazed? I just want to understand. You never seemed unhappy at the Emperor's court. Because I laughed? Because I danced? Because I flirted? You seemed contented. Contented. Now, that's the one thing I never found, contentment. Gaiety, yes. Pleasure, yes. Certain kind of success. All those things, yes. But contentment, never. Only the grace of God can bring contentment. But you were devout. We were all impressed with your piety. Really? I thought you laughed at it. Not always. Not much. You should have. It was piety in part. I wanted to go halfway in everything. Poverty, but not too much poverty. Chastity, but not altogether. Like the great St. Augustine... I was afraid that God would hear me too soon and heal me too soon. I had these feelings. I have them too. But what changed you? It was quite sudden and quite simple. I was riding across a meadow near Vreden in Westphalia. You remember the place? Yes, yes. It was a sudden thunderstorm. My horse reared and I was thrown. I was unconscious for an hour or more, I think. When I opened my eyes, I looked up at the angry sky, and I said aloud, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? The words seemed to come from me without conscious effort on my part. The words of St. Paul on the road to Damascus. And from deep within me, clear as only the inner voice can be, came the answer. Turn from evil and do good. Seek after peace and pursue it. As simple as that? As simple as that. And as complicated. Norbert, I have the same discontent you say you had. The life at court, it hasn't changed since you were there. <laughs> I'd be surprised if it had changed. When you disappeared, I felt it even more. The pleasures that do not please. The distractions that do not distract. Yes, yes. The life that is not living? I thought that if I could find you, you could tell me what to do. You thought that? I'll do whatever you say. What good is what I say unless you hear what God is saying? Then help me to hear what God is saying. For that you need only listen. I will listen. If you would let me stay here, become a novice perhaps. I meant that you need only listen to God. But if God chooses to speak to me through you... Do you mistake my voice for God's? Whatever I say is only my understanding of what he says to me. Listen to my words if you like. I pray they do you no harm. 
but listen not just to me, but listen at the same time to the voice of God that speaks within you. Count Theobald asked me to tell you, Father, that he will be back in time for Vespers, if it's possible. He had to go to law on private business. Business, Brother Hugh? That's what he said, Father Norbert. You know what St. Augustine said about business, Brother? Business is what boys call their games when they're grown up. Well, sometimes I think, Father, we live by St. Augustine's words as well as by his rule. There's no better rule and no better words. Yes, Father. If I quote him too often, Brother, it's... Because I trust him further than I trust myself. I understand, Father Norbert. I know you do, Brother Hugh, and I'm grateful. Tell me, um, what do you think of Count Theobald? Uh, he tries very hard. And what does that mean? Well, he rises promptly with the rest of us. He is prompt for matins. Sleepy, but prompt. What else? He never complains. What should he complain about? Oh, Father Norbert, Count Theobald is... Just left a life of ease and comfort. I've, I've watched him in the refectory. While the reading is going on, he will often turn to the brother next to him to make a comment and then remember the rule and check himself. Yes, I've noticed that. And the food, Father, is not what he's used to. No, it's not. He fasts till dinner with the rest of us. Mm, there's coffee for him if he wants it. Uh, well, he refuses it. He insists on doing what the others do. By mid-morning, he often looks quite pale. I've noticed that, too. No one does well what he does against his will, Father. Now you are quoting St. Augustine's words to me, Brother Hugh. Well, there are no better words, Father Norbert, as you have said. When Count Theobald returns from Lyon, I should like to talk to him, Brother Hugh, no matter how late it is. Tell him I should like to speak with him. And how did your business go in long, Theobald? Well enough. They're talking of taking an army into Italy. Pope Innocent has been in exile too long. I agree. They want to enlist me and my small army. What did you say? Nothing. That is, I declared myself in agreement with their ambitions, but that was all I could say till I talked with you. You wish to ask my advice? Their cause is a holy one. Yes. Shall I join them? Theobald, would you have me break one of the three cardinal rules of St. Ambrose? Never to persuade any man to be a soldier. Did St. Ambrose say that? To St. Augustine, who observed it all his life. Perhaps, Father, if you were to come to law with me one evening to hear what these gentlemen have to say, if they were most impressed that I knew you... And most eager to meet with you. The gentlemen are welcome to come here. I should be happy to listen. But I will not go too long. You won't go? But why? Would you have me break the second rule of St. Ambrose? Never to dine out, lest invitations should become too frequent? Ah, oh, Father, you're too much for me. You force me to make up my own mind. It's very hard, Father. Yes, it is, isn't it? Sometimes it seems impossible. Sometimes it seems so. But not for you. Why not for you? Is that how it appears to you? Yes, I watch you. I watch you all the time. You're serene. You're at peace. You go about your work. You never raise your voice. You never hesitate. You always know precisely what to do and how and when to do it. That is not so. It is so. When is it not so? Tell me when. Right now. Right now, I have not the slightest notion what to do with you. Brother Hugh. Yes, Father Norbert. Can we talk for a few minutes? Of course, Father. Where is our guest? Count Theobald is in the cloister, Father. Meditating? Uh, perhaps. But you don't think so? I think, Father, he is trying to learn all he can of St. Augustine. He is? And of St. Ambrose as well. He already knows the Psalter and the Ordinary. He's not even a postulant. What can you be thinking of? Oh, it can do him no harm, Father, and it might do him some good. Sometimes, Brother Hugh, I... 
I think he lacks good sense. Ah, oh, but he has such a good heart, Father Norbert, and a great love for you. But does he love God, Brother Hugh? Does he love God? Yes, Father, in his way he loves God. Or would, if he could find him. And is he trying to find him in the divine office? Does he think God hides between the pages of the breviary? I, I don't know, Father. I think he is willing to look anywhere, almost anywhere. Anywhere but in his own heart. Is that what you mean? It's not for me to say, Father. You are his spiritual guide. Yes. Yes, it is my responsibility. He's in the cloister, you say? Yes, yes, Father. I'll go and talk to him there. You must not try so hard, Theobald. God will not speak to me, Father Norbert. He will not speak to me. Perhaps because you will not be silent long enough to hear him. I pray all the time, but he does not hear me. He does not answer. What are your prayers? What do you want God to say to you? Why, that... that he accepts me as his own, that's all. Are you sure that's all? As he has accepted you? As he accepts all who truly love him. But are you sure you do not want more than that? Are you sure that you do not want to be not his child, but his favorite child? The one of whom he is most proud, to whom he is most loving? I don't know, Father. Perhaps. It's common weakness. We all share it. To be unique in God's sight. To be the one preferred above all others. It is our pride that makes us so. I will pray to God to take away my pride. Help me, Father. Oh, Theobald. Theobald, must you seek help in everything? You are a grown man with talent, with education, character. Use all these things. Let God use these things as he sees fit. Not everyone is born to be a religious. You think... I cannot be a religious. Do you think you can? Then what am I to do? Be still and listen to the voice within you. Father, there is a woman, Matilda, Princess of Bohemia. We had an understanding of sorts before I set out to find you. It would be a good marriage in many ways. Shall I... Marry her? Now you are asking me to break the third rule of St. Ambrose. Never to make matches, lest they prove unhappy. I do not even know the lady. Father, would you travel with me to Germany and meet the princess before I conclude the marriage treaty? Oh, Theobald. Wait. Here's what I will do. I'll travel with you as far as Speyer. The Emperor Lothair is holding a conference there, and he's asked me to attend. Come now, Theobald. Don't be downcast. I think perhaps you're beginning to discover God's plan for you at last. Brother Hugh, have you seen Father Norbert? He is still at prayer, Count Theobald. But he came back from his interview with the Emperor three hours ago. I need to talk to him. And he needs to pray. I must know if he will continue the journey with me to meet the princess. I do not think Father Norbert will be going with you. He told you so? Something has happened to alter his plans, all his plans. What has happened? Is he going back to Plémontre? He may never go back there. Then what? Where is he going? To Magdeburg. Why to Magdeburg? The Episcopal See at Magdeburg has been vacant for some time. Emperor Lothair has nominated Father Norbert to its bishopric. Father Norbert, a bishop? He had far rather return to Premontre. Then he won't be able to go with me to Bohemia? The deputies are waiting outside to escort him to Magdeburg. Then I've lost him. I won't have him with me. I was sure I could persuade him to come with me. I need him at my side. Without him, how will I know that I'm doing God's will? Oh, Theobald, Theobald. I thought we'd made some progress. Father Norbert, you're going to Magdeburg. They need a bishop there. The deputies are outside, Father. Tell them I'm ready to go with them. Yes, Father Norbert. Ready to go? Dressed like that? My habit is clean. But you're a bishop now. 
I am what I've always been. No more and no less, I hope. But you're not even wearing shoes. You're barefoot. It's the way of the white cannons, to remind us of the humility we try to practice. But for a journey like this, you should have sandals at least. No. I think I shall go to Magdeburg, just as I am. The deputies are here, Father. Shall I admit them? Please, Brother Hugh. Will you go in, please? Father Norbert is ready. It's time we were getting started, Father Norbert. Uh, one it's a moment. very long trip to Magdeburg, so if your servant has things ready, uh, he is not we'd not... like to be there by sundown. You're mistaken. The this... people of Magdeburg have been without a bishop for a long time, Father. But I'm uh, not... You there... Get the father's things together. He is and not... be quick about it, please. Don't speak to him that way. Well, I just want... He's not a servant. He's Father Norbert. He's, for... He's your new bishop. Oh, your reverence, um, your reverence, I did not realize, I did not know... You should have known. I did not expect to see you like... Uh, His clothes this... don't matter, or that he's barefoot. You should have known that he couldn't be a servant. Forgive me, my lord bishop. The gentleman is so right. I, I should have known... No, do not kneel. Get to your feet. I should have known you could not be a servant. But I am. I am a servant. You judged me rightly. Forgive me. I do not forgive you. I thank you. You have strengthened my belief that I am God's servant today, tomorrow, and forever. Shall we go now? Father Norbert, your reverence, shall I ever see you again? If God chooses that we should meet. But you are taking up the duties that befit your station in life. Perform them well. Trust in God. And listen for his voice. I'll try, Father. Do not grieve that you were not meant to be a religious. I tried. I tried to be worthy. But it was not God's will. I know. But you should not go grieving back into the world. You will not be a good ruler, a good husband, or a good father... If your soul is melancholy with thoughts of a life that was not meant for you. I know now that I had no vocation. That is true, my son. But it is not a reason to be unhappy. There is great joy when one finally discovers one's place in the scheme of things. But no matter how difficult, no matter what the sacrifices, no matter what the struggles, one is treading the path he was meant to tread. Great joy. I hope. That I know what you hoped. But it was not to be. God did not mean that it should be. And to cling stubbornly to a path that one is not suited to travel, that is going against God's will and God's wisdom. You should only have lost your way entirely. I know what you say is right, Father Norbert. And yet... And yet, my son? Is and yet still tormenting you? To feel that my search for God has failed. Why do you say it has failed? Have you given up the search? No. I hope I've not given up. You're only taking a different path. But the search goes on. Yes. Yes. Yes, and again, yes. I will go on searching, Father Norbert. I promise you. Good. That's what I wanted to hear. But a part of me still lives at Prémontré. Do you understand? Of course I understand. And that is why I brought you this. What is it, Father? A small white scapula. You may wear it underneath your outer garments. It will remind you of the bond that unites you with the white cannons. The bond that stretches across the miles. The bond that joins our lives no matter how they are lived. The bond that is unbreakable. The love of God. You will be one of us in a way. For the white cannons are cloistered. You are living in the world. Still, there will be this bond between us. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you. If it will help you to live with the love of God in your heart, the wonder of God in your mind, the glory of God singing in your soul. It will, Father. It will. Then it will serve God's holy purpose. Bless you, my son. Now I'm ready to go to Magdeburg. This incident appears to have been the first known case of the affiliation of a layman living in the world 
to a recognized religious order. From the white canons, or Norbertines, as the order has been called, St. Dominic, a century later, is thought to have taken the idea of secular tertiaries, an idea which soon spread to many other religious orders. Toward the end of his life, St. Norbert was elevated to Archbishop by Pope Innocent II in recognition of his outstanding service to the Church. And Emperor Lothair insisted on making him his Chancellor. St. Norbert died at Magdeburg in the year 1134, 23 years after his ordination at the age of 53. His relics lie in the Abbey of Strahov in Bohemia. <laughs>